Hi, it's James. I'll show you how to use the tone compression adjustment I've been working on for this new version of Affinity. It allows you to tone map high dynamic range imagery to standard dynamic range in a fast, real-time fashion. Because it's achieved via a non-destructive adjustment layer, it's ideal for more advanced compositing setups where you might have layer work both before and after a tone mapping process. I'll show you a couple of use cases, starting with a bracketed HDR merge. I'll go to File, New Image Process, HDR Merge. Then add my bracketed set of images. I'm going to uncheck Noise Reduction as it's not required for this set of images. And I also want to uncheck Tone Map HDR Image before clicking OK. Unchecking Tone Map HDR Image will prevent the app from moving into the Tone Mapping Studio once the merge has completed, because we're not going to use it. Instead, we're taken to the Pixel Studio with no tone mapping applied and the Clone Brush tool selected for ghost area retouching. I'll switch to the View tool for now. All of these bright areas are outside standard dynamic range and cannot currently be displayed. So I'll go to Pixel, New Adjustment Layer, Tone Compression to add a tone compression adjustment and we'll now see those bright areas in detail as they're being mapped to standard dynamic range. On the dialog, there are controls for exposure, gamma, and color, which give you some finer control over the result, but the method option is where you will get the widest variety of looks. Basic gives you a flat but colorful output, whereas the methods such as natural, bright, contrast, and Filmic will focus more on higher contrast output and more natural colors. Punchy and PBR Neutral maintain the contrast but bring back the color intensity. And Log produces a flat logarithmic output if you want to apply your own tone shaping. Although some of these methods are less colorful, you can of course increase the color slider. And for this example, I'll also increase Gamma slightly. You can also stack further adjustments above tone compression to manipulate the result further. I'll add an HSL shift adjustment with Command U on Mac, Control U on Windows, then increase the saturation. And I could also add a brightness contrast adjustment, increasing both sliders to make the image look more dramatic. The tone compression adjustment is also very useful for tone mapping 3D renders and other source material that can contain unbounded pixel values. For example, this render was created using Blender and saved out as an open EXR file. This writes the linear scene referred values which are unbounded and don't have the view transform applied. I've already got a couple of base adjustments here, and I'll add a tone compression adjustment on top of these. We can instantly see an improvement as those brighter values are compressed to within standard dynamic range. I'll cycle through the methods quickly to audition them and see which one I prefer. I might go with natural, then modify the exposure and gamma to taste. Again, don't forget that you can stack other adjustments to further modify the image. I might add a white balance adjustment and give the image a cooler look and perhaps a green tint or bias. But you should also experiment with the placement of adjustments like this. They may look better pre-tone compression where they can also affect the unbounded values. And there we go, a quick look at the tone compression adjustment. I hope you found this video useful, and thank you for watching.